Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we were introduced to this... guy. He's certainly not a pleasant young man, but he is a young man nonetheless. This is Richard Wellington, and he is the guy who clonked Phoenix on the head. That's just the term I'm going to be using from now on. He's the one who clonked Phoenix on the head and, you know, made him lose his memory. Now we're testifying, or, or now he's testifying, and we're cross-examining him. And he's just the worst. Just absolutely nothing redeemable about him. He's supposed to be, like, the first villain, so usually there's nothing redeemable about the villains of the first cases in these games. So we're just gonna keep on going. What happened next? The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. She ran away just like that? Yes, she did. She saw me and flew the nest like the guilty bird she is. That's actually a really good pun. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that pun too hard for someone who only got a third-rate education? Okay, now you ruined it, Wellington. The one time I gave you props. Actually, that did take me a few seconds to get. Anyway, she ran away the instant she saw you. How could you tell it was my client? Yeah? The so witness has already answered that question. He has stated that the defendant is the culprit. This is true. Mr. Wright, I'm striking your question from the record. He wasn't asking if it was, he was asking how did you see it? Huh, how can I get more information out of him? After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. Immediately? As in? As in immediately. I mean, sure, a minute might have elapsed before I did, but... That's the duty of every good citizen. Or did they not teach you that at your pitiful school? You think people learn about how to call the police in college? Hey, Nick, I think you should take a look at the court record for a second. Hmm? It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. How do you know what time it was? That detective told me. You know which one I mean. The one with the jacket that makes him look like a dropout from a no-name high school. Hey, pal! I graduated from a pretty good, I mean, top-ranked college! I don't believe this. It doesn't matter. I don't believe I was mistaken on what time I called. And if I am wrong, then the detective obviously doesn't know how to tell time. What? Why you? You're just some lousy kid who... I think the court can see your point. Anyway, how did the police respond? They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. So you're saying that there were police on the scene by 7pm? They got there before that, I think. There usually aren't that many people in the area at that time of day. But suddenly, before I knew it, there were people crawling all over, gawking. It certainly says something about the morals of the people in this country. Can't find anything out of the ordinary in this testimony. Why don't you take one more look at the court record? Yeah, I guess I should. Okay, so the contradiction for this one is if we go to this statement. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. He mentions that he called at 6.45. However, if we look at the autopsy report, he died at 6.28, meaning that 17 minutes passed and nothing happened. So he's not really right when he says immediately. Objection! Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report. According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So, what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you'd called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. There's clearly a 15 minute gap here. Do you deny it? Ah, uh, well actually, it's 17 minutes, but I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15 minute gap. Ugh. The witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. 
15 minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Ah! Mr. Wellington. Y yes Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? Answer the question. I, uh, telephone, uh, I mean... Spit it out. I, I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? Ugh. You and your questions, as if you're trying to open all the layers of a Matryoshka doll. You must think you're really something special. Witness. Uh, I lost my cell phone. There, are you happy? You lost it? Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that the first-rate people are never allowed to lose things? Haven't you ever heard that all geniuses have a strange quirk or two? So by that rationale, since I've my own quirk, it would mean that I'm a genius. I don't think simple plain people like you can understand. Enough. Oh man, oh man. Wait. Hold on a second. He lost... his cell phone. Nick! That cell phone! Could it be? You mean this phone that Maggie found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Question further. Mr. Wellington, where is your cell phone now? Heh, <laughs> what are you getting all excited about? You seem to be a little confused. I found my cell- I found my phone, I'll have you know. See? Here it is. Ah. Uh, I see. Hmm, looks like he's got his phone. And I thought that just maybe this was his. Hmm. Well then, I think we've cleared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by a search for a phone booth. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? There is something. Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness to search for a phone. How dare you! You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. Alright, let's have this proof then. Please present the proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. If we look at the first crime photo... There's a, there's a phone booth right there, where the victim died, where Richard Wellington supposedly was. It's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. At the crime scene photo. Is there a problem with it? Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with this picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you. No! It's... It's... A phone booth. That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? Ooh! Order, order. Why did reporting the crime a little late prove for you? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Then I bet this phone really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. But Maggie said that she was going to return it to him. So there is no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm, but if he, but if he wasn't looking for his cell phone, was he looking for something else? Was he? Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during those 15 minutes? Yes, I have an idea. There's only one possible explanation. Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, 
you will be penalized. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Ugh, I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? He was searching for his glasses. Mr. Wellington. What? Don't do that. You almost gave me a heart attack. These are your glasses, aren't they? Uh, where? Where did you find... Gah! I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. That these glasses are in fact yours. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. Uh, under the victim's body? Order, order. N now, wait a second. Hold on. I, I didn't confess or confirm anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find the glasses and search frantically for them. What he didn't realize was that they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. M Mr. Wright, are you... Are you indicting the witness as the real murderer? Of course. That is precisely what I am doing. Ooh. Wah! I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah, this is so exciting watching you work again. Somehow, my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Order, order. Your Honor, the defense, the defense is making a mockery of this court. With that insult grants a stand on, he accuses the witness of being the real murderer. Y yeah, th that's right. I, I'm no criminal. Th this third-rate threat of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. Why, that's, that's easy. I'm, uh, for example, there's a, the name of the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Yeah, even an idiot like you can read that, right? But we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is M-A-G-G-E-Y, and the victim was left-handed. So basically, you are saying that in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. But, 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 wouldn't that mean that the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how else would the person know her name was Maggie, or Maggie? That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bird before this trial. Ah, I forgot. Huh. Was there any way the creep could have known Maggie's name beforehand? There was a way. It would be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn that the defendant's name was Maggie. Now will the, the, now, will the defense please present its case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? Mr. Wellington, you didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why you... how did you... Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there is some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. Um, hello? 
Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. Uh, um, uh... But you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake. My client's name is Maggie, but the name that was written on the ground was M-A-G-G-I-E. This is a mistake that could only occur if you, all you knew was how her name sounded. Eek! Order, order. But, but your honor, the witness has no motive. And your point is? It's very simple, your honor. A person would usually not kill someone without a reason. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. That is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Your Honor? Can you explain what motive this witness could have had? It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Y yeah, but... Now then, please present to this court proof that the witness had a motive. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. What is this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people in this list are members of a certain group. You... you looked up those numbers? Of course. This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist group. What? C -c -c con artist? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? Th this this is an outrage, an invasion of privacy. Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone is a worse crime than murder. You, you're one of those people. You're just like the cops who read that brilliant artist. More recent they disrupted the work and interrupted his dialogue with the goddess of. I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us about what this list is about. Do you think you, of a, any of you, can know what it's like to be a refined man like me? Your Honor, this is, this is unjust battering of the witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the numbers of a group of con artists on his phone? Isn't it obvious? The witness is a member of that group. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No! All of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. No! This is too much! Hmm, that does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, um... I... I got you now. I... I... That's... I... That police officer... Your Honor! What is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, this... This is... This, this is unjust battering of the witness. You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. P -p 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 please Please, just think about the content of that phone call. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet Miss Bird and get his phone back. Why, then, would he need to kill anyone? Hmm. That is a valid point. What does the defense think about this point? Hmm. If you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, if we think like that. Let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? Hmm. Well, I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick his phone up in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well then, Mr. Wright, what was this something that didn't agree with the witness? 
What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. Your victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Oh. The girl that picked up my phone is with a policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might run a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check on his phone. And he went into a panic. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I, um, I'm thinking. Hmm. It seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington. You are... <laughs> Impressive. Not bad for a person with a third-rate education. What's that supposed to mean? The evidence. Evidence! Ugh. That guy is really creeping me out. All you've been waving around and talking about is that suspicious cell phone. Suspicious phone numbers, this, suspicious con group, that. They're all on that phone. But who's to say that phone is really mine? Where's your proof? Where's your evidence? You want proof that this phone is yours? <laughs> I already told you earlier. That phone I lost, I've already found it. And I don't even have the slightest idea who that phone in your hand belongs to. You can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? <laughs> it feels good to see you squirm. Hmm. We do seem to have a problem on our hands with this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that, it's meaningless as evidence. Your Honor! This is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Huh. <sighs> This cell phone. There has to be something I've overlooked. There's gotta be. Hmm. Maybe. I've got it! We should check for fingerprints. Finger... Prince? With the name of the victim being what it is, that is very unfortunate wording. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on this phone. Nick, don't you remember? When you got that from Maggie, you wiped it off. Like, what? You said there was sand all over it, so... W wiped it? I wiped it? Pretty thoroughly, too. <laughs> it's oh so much fun watching third-rate trash babble like morons amongst themselves. Ugh, he's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see? Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the numbers stored on this phone. It must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. You gotta be joking. You erased all the numbers I was going to use as evidence. Mr. Wellington. What's this? From the way you talk to me, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? <laughs> oh, you are just too much. And of course, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I... I... Oh my god... Now I remember! Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. So that's when... What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Nick, we've worked so hard to get this far, but if you don't do something quick, he's going to get off scot-free. I know. I know this phone has to be his, but how am I supposed to prove something like that? 
Mr. Wright, if you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. It looks like you came up a penny short. Where? Where did I go wrong? Don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who... I am? This court hereby concludes the cross-examination. <laughs> if that will be all, I'll have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have a reservation at the ultra-fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go at that? Please wait, Your Honor. All right, Nick. I think I might be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Y your Honor, this cross-examination has already ended. If he questions the witness with any more of his badgering, you will not harass the witness. Is that clear, Mr. Wright? Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well, but this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may pres- you may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this. If you cannot prove everything. It's over. For your client, and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sure you're well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh! Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. It's go time! Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. Why, thank you. How nice. Here, please have one of mine. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. You can actually go into the court record and see Judge's business card. It's written in fancy script. The ink is strong and clear, but I still can't read it. Your Honor, there's something very important about that card. And that is... the back of the card. This card is important because of what is on the back. Hmm? You wrote your cell phone number on the back, but... But that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Huh? Right now? But court is still in session. It's okay. You'll see. Okay, if you say so. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We are going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Of all the idiotic stupid things to... What? Why is my phone? And what is with that stupid sounding ringtone? Mr. Wellington. Huh. How strange. I could almost swear that you're holding my phone. Y you're. Ah! No, 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 no! I, it can't! By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. I don't think I need to explain any further except to say... When you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one. So that is what happened. You were knocked out by Mr. Wellington. 
He is a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. It's in order to hide his involvement with the con artists group, he has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Hmm. Then, see Mr. Rice, your phone you're holding. It's Mr. Wellington's, naturally. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Ah, he was just arrested and he's been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. That is all. This court is adjourned. September 8th, 2.16 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. I knew that the real you would shine through eventually. I'm so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. It's probably because of me. Huh? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? It couldn't have been that bad, could it? Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed in almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster, and never won or even tied it at a game of tic-tac-toe. My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. Up until I went to college, I was known as the Goddess of Misfortune. And then at the Academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless? What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch on to those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Ah, that's right. You were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently too, sir. There's an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I give her my hand, and before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. Oh. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true. That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault. Dustin's death, your head being all messed up, a... Uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. I'm going to find a new life for myself starting now. The next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll have found a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah. After all, the Goddess of Misfortune is only a name. You bet. I'm gonna make it, I promise. Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Y yeah that's the spirit. Well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks, you take care of yourselves too. <sighs> what a horrible day. I've gotten my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried. Come on, let's go back to the office. Huh. I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So this might sound bad, but, uh... Who are you? What? I thought you said you got your memory back. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe. He's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases. But he's also been a good ally during others. The Judge. He's a lovable, kind old man who is easily swayed by other people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. This person... I haven't got a clue. He seems to know me, but... Maybe he's mistaking me for someone else? <laughs> and this girl... Maya? You... You finally remembered! This is Maya Faye. My assistant. That's right. I have so many unforgettable memories about her. For example... Earth to Nick, what's wrong? Keep staring at me. Don't tell me you've missed me. 
Uh, well... Yeah, I suppose I have. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Oh? Well, I'm back now. So it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick. Let's go to our usual burger joint. Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been two months since you came back into my life. And that story... That story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago.